Hi everyone, this is Joy, and I wanted to share something with you that I believe God has put on my heart uh, lately. And I just, if it could help one person, then I'm willing to get on here and share it. And so what I wanted to talk with you about today was something that um, I have dealt with, and there's many, many other women and men who have dealt with this. And I just thought I would give you, let you know what God showed me and how I deal with it, and just some words of encouragement for you today. Now, as a parent, uh, we raise our children hoping that they will stay in the faith and continue on with the tradition, the faith that we've taught them throughout their adulthood, because we know from where we are and where we've come from that they will need it. So out of love and out of obligation to our children, we teach them the faith. So what happens when as they get older and as they move out on their own, our faith that we've taught them becomes irrelevant and they become indifferent to it, not needing it. It's our faith, it's good for us, but they don't need it. What do you do? And how do you deal with this? Well, when, this, when I went through this years ago, um, one of the things that I did was, the first thing I did was I felt guilt. Guilt weighed on me. And I started to pray and ask God, what is it that I did wrong? How can I mess up? What did I do to mess up? Where did I not teach enough? Where did I not show enough? What did I do wrong? Please show me so I can do a better job next time. And I had this guilt thinking that it must have been something I did or didn't do. And guilt, I'll tell you right now, doesn't come from God. He doesn't give us the feeling of guilt. We get that from, the, from Satan. He gives us the feeling to make us feel the guilt and the responsibility for things we are not responsible for. So I prayed and lo and behold, I was listening to the radio one day and a woman called in to a talk show and she said the same thing. My children have turned away. They don't go to church. They don't practice any faith and they don't want to listen to me. And I feel like I'm, I've done something wrong. What didn't I do? How was it that I was, to, what was I supposed to do to make sure that they did not turn away from the faith? And this, I believe it was a priest on the radio. He said, he goes, well, let's, let me ask you a few questions. And he said, do you believe that Jesus walked the earth? He was born of a woman and he walked the earth. And she said, yes. And he said, do you believe he taught, he fed people? He walked with people. He looked people face in the face, face, face to face. He hugged people. Do you believe that that's probably why? How? She said, yes, yes. He walked among us. He was, uh, Jesus was here to teach and to show us what we needed to do and how we were supposed to live. And he said, and do you believe he is the son of God? She said, yes, of course. And he said, did everybody follow him? Did he convert everybody that he healed, that he spoke with, that he witnessed the good news to? Did everybody follow him? And the answer is no. And I remember tears falling down my face because that was such a relief knowing, okay, Jesus walked here. He walked right by people, looked them in the face, and still many of them turned their backs. Many of them called for his crucifixion. So if that did not happen with Jesus, how can I put that responsibility on myself? How can I be thinking that it's up, solely up to me to make sure that my children go off and grow in the faith and follow Jesus like they should? It's not up to me. What's up to me is to plant seeds, to plant seeds, to give an example, and to live the best I know with the focus of trying to steer them towards God and showing them how important he is in my life. So that was a relief. And the second thing was that I learned in that time where I really, really was struggling with this was prayer. Now you hear people say, well, all we can do is pray. All we can do is pray. Well, what do you mean all you can do is pray? We can pray. Thank God we can pray. And how do you pray for that? What do you pray for? Well, when I think, you know, when you look in the Bible in Mark, 
Mark chapter 6, I believe, Jesus is talking and he has just been to his hometown and he can't perform many miracles because people just don't have the faith there. And he tells you that a prophet is not un unhonored except in his own hometown, among his own family, his own kin, and in his own house. So when we are thinking of our children, the last person your adult child is going to listen to about how they should live, where they should go, what they should, is you, their parent. They're not going to listen to, their, to the people in their family because they know your faults. They know your shortcomings. They know how you could say this, but you can act this way because we're human. We mess up. And so they're not going to listen to you like they would maybe somebody else. So that's the first thing you have to realize is it's not what you're saying or how you're saying it or how you portray it most of the time. It's just it's coming from mom or it's coming from dad or it's coming from grandma and they don't know. So how do we pray for this? What you do is you pray for God to bring people into their life, to surround them with people who are good examples of Christianity, of God's love, of living the faith. That's what you pray for. And I've seen this happen. I've seen this happen where people move into my children's life that are a good example, are teaching them something or uh, reaffirming something that I've taught them, but it's not coming from me. And the other thing is bringing uh, situations into their life, bringing situations or things they have to go through um, that will ultimately bring their focus, turn them back to God. And so pray. You have God, you have angels, you have an army to help steer, influence, and remind your children of the seed you planted. Now we are not called, we are not called to save our children. We are called to guide and to plant seeds. And these people who come into their lives or these situations that happen to your children that have come through your prayers, those are the watering and the fertilizing of the seeds that you've already planted. So you do have a hand in it from the beginning, you know, bring them up in the way they should go. We are supposed to do that as parents, but do not devalue the power of prayer and the power of coming in agreement with a husband and wife to come in agreement praying for that child or other people that fail to pray for that child. God can work in so many ways that we don't even understand and in ways that we may not even see or recognize until someday down the road. But I just want to give you encouragement to do not take the guilt on yourself and do not think that you're helpless because we're not. We can pray. We have faith. We can pray. And we can one day see the results of that prayer and that work that we've put in and those seeds we've planted. So those are my words for you. And I just pray that you just don't take the guilt upon yourself and you know that you can still do, you can still be working in your sons, daughters, or other family, their lives through your prayer. Amen? Amen.